No Steph Curry, no problem for the Golden State Warriors in game two of the first round of the NBA playoffs. I'm Courtney Cronin. He's Marcus Thompson. The Warriors secure a 115-106 victory over Houston. They take a 2-0 lead, headed to Houston for a Thursday matchup. Marcus, we talked about this. What, what was going to be at stake without Steph Curry? Did it look like maybe it was going to go five games? Now are we back to four? First off, can you uh, acknowledge to the people that I said it would be an eight-point game, and it was a nine-point game. Do you think? Tell them how great I am. That is accurate, and that's all we're going to spend. Uh, that's the amount of time we're oh, going to spend it. on that that's topic. So it's four games, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to win the series. They just basically took the Rockets' heart. They beat them without Steph Curry. I mean, what can you do? Mm -hmm. If you're on that long, what, four-hour flight to Houston, there are no <laughs> answers on that plane. They have no answers. So uh, in game three, Steph comes back, if he even comes back. Mm -hmm. You know that he's going to be uh, ready to go. He's probably going to have a big game, and it's probably going to be a replay of last year. Uh, maybe the Rockets have some fight left. Maybe they want to save home court. I just don't see it from this team. They haven't shown much resolve. Even last year in the West Finals when they lost the series in five games, it was tooth and nail here games one and two. They almost won game two if James Harden didn't choke down the stretch. So now they're losing by, you know, almost double digits without Steph Curry. So I think they're done. Clay Thompson, 34 points on Monday night. Steve Kerr told him to channel his inner Reggie Miller. He didn't have to drive as much as he did, but moving without the ball and getting some other guys involved, that was what Steve Kerr really emphasizing that point post-game. And on the flip side, the word that Thompson used for Sean Livingston, the backup point guard, mesmerizing. I don't know if I was mesmerized. <laughs> I thought it was okay performance. You know, they didn't play great. They... Really, with the part that for me was a little lacking was defense. Mm -hmm. I think Clay took a lot of bad shots. He kind of forced it. You know, last time he played without Steph, he was on fire. This time he wasn't on fire, but he was shooting like he was on fire. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that great of a game from them. I thought what they did though was they played with poise. They withstood the run and they they kind of managed it. Right? right, Houston was making a run and they they held it together. So. You expect that from a team that's been to a championship before. So I would call it mesmerizing. I would call it uh, enough. They did enough to be what, in essence, is a bad Rockets team. We talk about depth with this team all the time. Draymond Green, not his best night. He was really playing point guard for a good point, a good portion of Monday night. But Andre Iguodala, Maurice Spades, those guys getting involved, I mean, what did you specifically see from Iguodala tonight to where he said last Wednesday when they go for 73, obviously Curry hits 10 three-pointers. He says he felt hot that night. That was the night that he started to see the rhythm coming, didn't get his looks. But tonight he really capitalized on that. That's almost a week away, a week gone in, in, in the past. We, what we're seeing is that this is what Andre does. When the Warriors need him, he produces. They need a big shot, he gives it. They need him to run the point, he runs it. They need him to make a great pass, he does it. This team needed somebody, and so Andre raised his hand and he did what he had to do. This is his legacy as a warrior. It's always giving the team what it needs. Need somebody to guard James Harden, I got it. Need me to guard LeBron, I got it. Need me to hit threes, I got it. Whatever this team needs, and not, not until they need it, right? He'll go 10 games without doing much of anything. But when you need him, that's when he produces, and tonight was a night where I felt like Iguodala was the one who controlled this game. He was a guy who had the calm, the poise, like, I got this. Everybody calm down. It's me. We don't have Steph, but we got me, so we're good. The Warriors have two days rest before playing Houston in Houston on Thursday night. Steve Kerr kind of let something slip post game, yeah, saying, saying that there might be an issue with Curry's foot, not necessarily his ankle. That's a story that we had heard for the last few days, that it was the ankle. What, what, what is the situation there? Is it more of an, a foot issue now? This is what we call playoff drama, right? This is what we <laughs> needed. We got a little, a little issues, a little controversy. Uh, it, it's not his ankle in the sense that, you know, the same surgically, surgically repaired ligaments. Uh, it's more of his foot. There's something going on, the kind of bottom back of his foot. Uh, I talked to Curry about it uh, privately, and he said it wasn't his ankle, it was his foot, which is part of the reason he didn't really know that he wasn't going to play. He kind of got surprised out here. He was warming up, and he felt something that he didn't expect to feel. But he's such a master of an ankle of ankles, considering his history, 
he kind of got surprised by that. He didn't expect to not play. So he was thrown for a loop by that. But that's because his foot. This is new territory for him. So uh, the question now is, can it heal in five days? Whatever it is, mm -hmm. ankle, foot, will it be done by game three? Uh, he seems to think so, and uh, so do the Warriors, because uh, he's probably going to play game three. That's the safe bet.